Hey everyone, and welcome to Murder and Mysteries with Megan. This week, I wanted to do something special in honor of reaching 200 subscribers here on my channel. So I thought, what better way to celebrate 200 subscribers than having two videos this week? And that the second video would be a topic that one of you requested. Today's video was requested by Ed Bond under the last Haunted Locations video here on Murder and Mysteries with Megan. So without further ado, Let's talk about five different haunted locations in Tennessee. The first location that we're going to talk about today is the Greenwood Cemetery in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The story goes that a wealthy family lived nearby the cemetery in Chattanooga. The wife of this wealthy family ended up becoming quite ill and she almost lost her life. However, she did end up pulling through and surviving, but not unscathed. She ended up being in a wheelchair. Over time, her husband ended up falling in love with another woman. However, because divorce was such a taboo subject years ago, he didn't want to divorce his wife and be known as a divorced man by the others in town due to his stature and the pride that he had. So what did he do? He decided that instead of divorcing his wife, he would kill her. One morning, he took his wife out for a stroll and down towards a nearby lake. It was during this that he would drown her in this lake only to claim it was an accident and that she had died. Visitors over the years in the Greenwood Cemetery have seen a strange green mist that seems to be floating around the tombstones. Other visitors that have visited early in the morning after they see this strange green mist and have gone over to investigate state that there will be eerie tracks on the ground, ones that look an awful lot like that of a wheelchair. So could this be the wife who was brutally murdered by her husband so that he could be with his mistress? Or is this something else that roams this Chattanooga Cemetery? The second location we're going to talk about today is in Red River or Adams, Tennessee. And this is about the Bell family curse. This small town is located on the outskirts of Nashville. The story surrounds the Bell family back in the early 1800s. John and Lucy Bell were married and they had decided to relocate from North Carolina to Tennessee during this time, along with many other families who wanted to make this move. They purchased a lot of property and a beautiful brand new home in Tennessee. This allowed him and his family to settle here and become farmers and become well known in the community. One of the families that actually came over with them had a devastating event happen to them. They had to sell their property and who else too, but John Bell. This family was really upset, and due to the arrangements between them, they felt that they were completely ripped off by John Bell and his family, and they started telling stories about the Bell family. One of the members of this family, her name was Kate, was accused of witchcraft, and she had stated that the Bell family would pay for doing this to hers. This is when the Bell family began being haunted by an unseen force. In fact, in 1817, John Bell one day stated that he came across what was a dog-like creature with the head of a rabbit. So he fired his gun to kill it, but when he went to inspect, the creature was gone. It had disappeared. After this, things started to get more intense, and noises and things started happening outside of the Bell family home. They would hear noises outside, like creaking windows, howling noises, things being thrown at the home, and scratching sounds coming from outside. It then got worse, and everything started inside the home. They would hear thumping and scratching noises. Animals that would be inside the home would be afraid. Things continued to even get worse. Objects would fly across the room and mess with the children. And even one of their daughters woke up to her hair being tied to the bed and said that she was slapped and felt like she was strangled. This continued on with the rest of the children as time went by. And then the family started seeing full-blown apparitions. The Bell family called in help finally and claimed that when they asked what the spirit's name was, it claimed it was Kate. The Bell family's story was so widely told that even Andrew Jackson ended up making a trip out there to see what all this paranormal talk was about. However, he could only make it through one night before leaving. He later stated, I would rather face the entire British army than spend another night at the Bell House. Later on, John Bell actually ended up dying, and the cause of death was stated to have been one of supernatural force. They believed that all of this happened due to this business deal that had gone wrong. Some people claimed that the paranormal activity stopped after John had died. However, others state that these events still happen on the property even to this day. Now, it isn't in the house because it was torn down in 1843, 
and the farm, it wasn't haunted. However, there is a cave on the property that is said to be haunted by the witch who cursed the Bells so many years ago. So will you take your chances visiting the Bells property? Or will you stick to the movies and stories based on this Tennessee legend? The third location that we're going to talk about today is the Newberry House in Rugby, Tennessee. There is a small town with very few residents called Rugby, Tennessee. Over the past couple of hundred years, not much has changed in this small town, including a small inn that is called the Newberry House. In room two of this old inn, the Charles Oldfield Room, named after the London businessman from the 1800s who was visiting there, Charles Oldfield had stayed here, awaiting his wife's arrival. However, during his stay, he ended up passing away, but his spirit has never left. It is said that his spirit still haunts this room today, waiting on his wife to return to him. Guests have stated that the room feels cold, and that the digital clock in the corner of the room will start flashing on one particular time. Employees at this haunted location state that despite trying to fix the clock, and the fact that there are no electrical issues here, it always continues flashing. Some of the other guests will experience even more activity in this room. Some women that have stayed here have reported feeling nudged and feeling a presence behind them as they're sleeping. Those that are employed here state that, that this is just Charles Oldfield's ghost, seeing if the woman sleeping in the bed is his wife who has finally returned to be by his side after all these years. Of course, there are other rooms in this Victorian style inn as well that have their share of unexplainable activity. Some guests report windows closing in the middle of the night on their own, seeing apparitions in the corner of the bedrooms, feeling as though electricity is pulsing through their bodies and hearing strange noises. Some even stated that they had to leave early because it was just too intense. They could not sleep. If you are in the area of this small town in Tennessee, will you take your chances and stay the night? The next location in Tennessee that we're going to be talking about, known for its paranormal stories, is Roaring Fork Motor Nature Trail in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. On this five and a half mile drive through the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, you'll see many historic cabins, beautiful views of the mountains, old mills, and you may even catch a glimpse of a ghost that is said to be hitchhiking along this road. This story is of a ghost named Lucy. Lucy was a young woman who died inside of her family's cabin when a fire engulfed the home back in the early 1900s. According to legends told, the first paranormal sighting of Lucy was by a man named Foster. After Lucy died, this man had seen her walking barefoot along the path in the forest on this overgrown mountain road. It was freezing and it was in the dead of winter, so Foster offered this young girl Lucy a ride home on his horse and she accepted. Foster was immediately intoxicated by Lucy's beauty. However, he went on his way after dropping her off at home. A while later, Foster still couldn't get Lucy off of his mind, so he returned to her parents' home. He intended to ask for her hand in marriage. However, when he did arrive at her parents' home, and he asked if he could marry Lucy, they told him of her tragic end in the fire. It was then that he realized that the woman that he had seen and given a ride home to on that cold winter night had been nothing more than an apparition. If you would like to take your chances to see if you too will pick up a hitchhiking ghost, take the Cherokee Orchard entrance into Smoky Mountains National Park. Once you've passed by the Rainbow Falls Trailhead, the next trail that you should see is the Roaring Fork Motor Nature Trail. Here is where you may run across a barefooted Lucy making her way through the woods to her home. This fifth and final location that we will talk about today is located in Kingsport, Tennessee. This location is called Sensabaugh Tunnel that was built in the 1920s and was named after the man who owned the property, Edward Sensabaugh. This tunnel in Kingsport has had a few different origination stories that surround it. The first one is told of a homeless man who entered Edward's home to steal money and jewels from him. When the thief entered the home, Edward went after him. However, the thief actually scooped up his baby and used it as a shield to escape from their home. Therefore, the thief was able to escape and ended up drowning the baby in water that was next to the tunnel. It has now been deemed Crybaby Pool. The second story that surrounds Sensabaugh Tunnel is about Edward. 
The story goes that Edward Sensabaugh lost his mind one evening. He murdered his wife and his baby while they were in bed. He then took their bodies down to the tunnel, where he then took his own life. The last story told about this tunnel states that a young woman was driving along the road when her car broke down directly inside of the tunnel, and she was never seen again. Some people believe that she either got lost in the woods looking for help. However, others believe that she was murdered inside of the Sensabaugh house. Regardless, this young woman was never seen again. Visitors of the Sensabaugh tunnel state that if you turn off your car inside of the tunnel, it won't turn back on. Some people state that it wasn't until they saw Edward heading towards their car that they were finally able to get their vehicle to start back up. However, others state that they could never get their car to start back again until after they had pushed it physically out of the tunnel. Other visitors have said that they saw a woman sitting in their back seat, or they hear a baby crying, or found handprints on their car. Others say that they saw Edward pop up in the rearview mirror while they were sitting there inside of the tunnel. So are you brave enough to try to find this tunnel that is found off of Big Elm Road in Kingsport? Or will you stick to hearing the stories of others who have visited? Well, everyone, that is it for today's video here on Murder and Mysteries with Megan. Once again, I want to say thank you for your support here on my channel and thank you for the location suggestion for today's video. I would love to hear more suggestions from you guys in the comments below on what you would like to see on my channel in the future, whether it's haunted locations, true crime cases, conspiracies, or other mysterious things. And please make sure before you leave to hit that subscribe button and that post notification bell so that you're notified each time I upload a new video and so that you can see if one of your suggestions are chosen for a future video as well. Anyways, I hope you all have a wonderful and safe week, and until next time, my mystery lovers, bye!